Yeah, I figured today uh, could be a good opportunity because people are always asking um, us like how to study with books. I think that's like one of the most common questions I see uh, like on YouTube and on Twitch. It's just like, oh, how do you study with books? Should you set them up on a physical board or uh, is online board okay? Can you read them from like a Kindle? And then like, how do you go through it? How much time should you take? Should you play through all the variations and all this stuff? So people always have tons and tons of questions. So I figured today could be a good chance to um, just do it like I would normally do it and give you guys uh, a chance to see what that uh, is like. I've been studying with books for, for many, many years. Uh, and so I've done this quite a bit. I think it's one of the best ways to learn new ideas in chess is to read good chess books written by good authors that show good games and present good ideas, right? That hopefully you didn't already know. Um, okay, so today I'm going to be studying Zlotnik's Middle Game Manual. Yeah, this book is pretty cool. Actually, uh, I didn't know the author until uh, I saw this book, but it's written by international master Boris Zlotnik, and he was actually the coach of Fabiano Caruana for many years uh, when Caruana was growing up in uh, Europe. Um, so I actually didn't didn't know that. And so this is like his big middle game book. I think it came out uh, either last year or maybe end of 2019. And um, yeah, it looks like a really interesting book. I think I'm going to do a full review on it for the YouTube channel. Let's see. I think I'm going to go with the third chapter, Symmetrical Pawn Structures. And uh, normally I would just like start from the beginning, but this book doesn't really seem like it matters because the chapters are on completely uh, different topics. I feel like you can probably just bounce around based on what you're interested in, uh, which I really like. Okay, so when you're going through a book, step one, uh, read the words on the page, right? So before you get into the games, usually the author, you know, writes something. As, as an author myself and someone who makes courses, usually I, I put a lot of thought into the introduction because this is where you like introduce the topic and you kind of tell the reader, you know, like what what they're going to be learning in the chapter, you know, so it's kind of an important, so don't just skip. And I, I, I know what you guys do because I've, I've read a lot of books on Chessable and I know the feeling. It's like you just want to get to the content. So you skip through all the informational pages. Just go skip, 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 skip. You just like don't even read through it. The author spent hours and hours and hours of time writing and you're just like, whatever, let me just get to the puzzles. You don't even read, like the author has some instructions like, you know, here's how you should go through a course or here's how you should read this book. You just skip through it, you know. <laughs> so don't do that. Try to try to read what the author tells you, okay? They're, they're writing the words for a reason. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. So it's actually a short introduction, so I'll, I'll just read it. Uh, okay, in the middle of the 1930s, great interest was aroused among chess fans in the USSR by the following game in which the editorial team of a well-known Moscow newspaper played against their readers. Okay, so here we have a game between a newspaper and their readers. Interesting. So game one, let's, uh, let's update. Okay, E4, E5. All right, so now once you see chess moves, this is the part where you start making the moves on a board. And uh, normally, actually, one big difference between this and what I would normally do is I generally do prefer to study games OTB. And uh, the only reason I'm not is because I'm streaming and that would be difficult. But, but anyway, normally I would be using the, the physical board because I, I think it just feels better and you know I'm training for tournament chess, OTB. I think it makes sense to use the thing that you're you're training for. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're using an online board, I mean, it's really all the same. I would suggest moving the pieces yourself. I think some people, you know, they like to like copy the game in so they can like quickly play through it. And I think there there's something there's something good about the uh, the the ritual of like making the moves yourself using your own hand to put the pieces on the squares. So knight c3, knight c6, bishop b5, bishop b4. Ah, I think I'm starting to see uh, a pattern here. So this is the the well-known copycat game. Although I remember seeing this one as a Capablanca game, which gets mentioned later. 
Um, so d3, d6, bishop g5, bishop g4. Uh, question mark. Okay, black plays riskily, but apparently the curiosity of the chess playing readers to see what would happen outweighed their caution. <laughs> so they just wanted to copy all the moves. Very funny. Theory's main line, instead of bishop g4, is to go bishop takes c3, bc, queen e7. Oh, I missed castles, castles, excuse me. d3, d6. Oh, no, no, we castled here. Okay. Then d3, d6. And then bishop g5, bishop g4 was played. Right, instead of bishop uh, g4, better is to take here. Take queen e7, rook e1, knight d8. d4, knight e6, bishop c1. Yeah, this looks like theory I've seen before. Um, though not too important for our sake. So, do you have to comb through every single variation in a book? In my opinion, no. What we're trying to do when we're going over games is to just learn some new ideas, some ideas that we wouldn't be super obvious to us at first glance. I think to me, this is what like getting better at chess is all about, just like learning new ideas or new ways of thinking about uh, the game. Maybe there is a move that you weren't able to find before, but after reading some notes in the book, you can now understand how a player could find such move. Uh, so I think this is kind of the most useful thing um, when it comes to learning from games. Okay, so black goes bishop g4, knight d5, and um, okay, it says after bishop takes f6, g takes f6, and right here actually we can just pause because yeah, my first thought is like, wait, why why g f6? Why not queen takes f6? And this is maybe a good example, the kind of thing we're looking for when we're going through uh, a book. Basically, anything that doesn't immediately make sense to you, you should try to pause and figure it out. So in the notes here, it just says g f6 and doesn't mention queen takes f6. But looking at it optically, it's like, wait, wouldn't black want to take with the queen here, most likely? And then I think it's worth it to take a second and try to just figure it out, well, Queen takes f6 is probably bad, otherwise it would be mentioned. So what could be wrong with this move? And uh, okay, we think about it, we calculate it, and I think we spot the idea here, knight to d5, hits the queen and the bishop on uh, b4. Queen is hanging with check. And if the queen moves somewhere, black has to be very careful. Like let's say uh, queen h6, then white is taking here and winning the bishop. So it looks like white is winning the piece. But if the queen was going to g6, then there would even be like knight e7 uh, check. So it looks like that's that's the reason. Like knight d5, queen moves, bishop c6, white wins a piece. So that's why black has to go gf6. And then it says takes, takes, h3, bishop e6, knight h4, white has a slight advantage. Um, okay, definitely that evaluation makes sense. We have this knight coming to f5, queen coming to h5. I can see why white would be uh, slightly better here. Um, so let's go back. And I guess the nice thing about working with the board is that you can check with the engine to see if what you thought was correct. So let me put, put queen takes f6 here, check with the engine. Yep, it says knight d5 is winning, queen h6, and then takes, takes, and yeah, knight takes b4, we win the piece. And so normally this is, I think, what I would feel like is a good process. If you have a question that's not covered in the book, which if you're going through a game, you might have lots of questions. There might be lots of moves that you consider that are not covered and you're wondering whether they work or not. First, try to figure it out yourself. And then if you really want to, you can consult with uh, the engine. Um, a lot of times I would just be, you know, working through a game over the board and then there's no engine to consult, right? So if I'm, if I'm really curious about something, I'll have to go and set it up. And that would happen every once in a while, but mostly I would just try to figure it out myself. And then if I was really curious or really stuck, then I would go set it up on, on the computer and analyze with the engine and see, uh, see what I was missing. Okay, so knight d5 um, was instead played, but I could have played bishop takes f6 and forced this position and be slightly better, okay. 
black goes knight d4. <laughs> Very funny. And uh, knight takes b4 is played. Wow. So c3 was also possible. Knight takes b5, and then the line goes bishop takes f6, gf6, knight takes b4, c6, knight c2. With a clear positional advantage for white. Yeah, knight is coming to e3, and black just has no compensation, it seems, for the, uh, for the weakness. And then white played this one, but could have played for c3, and then gone for this line. Uh, well, there's other questions here, but... Okay, not too important. Knight takes b4. Let me guess, knight takes b5, yep. Knight d5, knight d4. And now queen d2, x clamp. Okay, bishop takes f3 was play, and this is given a question mark, and it says, uh, as always, the engine reveals the truth. The black position is not as bad as various analysts, such as the great Paul Karras, have thought. Uh, instead, queen d7 loses immediately. Yeah, I remember a Capablanca game that went like this, where the, <laughs> the opponent just tried to copy him, and it was just game over. Takes, takes, 97 check. Okay, there you go. Can't copy a check. <laughs> King h8. <laughs> Takes, takes, queen g5, queen f6, and that was that was gg. Capablanca, nn, New York, simul, 1918. All right, so apparently the best continuation was knight takes f3, g takes f3, bishop takes f3, h3, exclaim. h3, black goes knight takes e4. Oh, the key move. Wow. Queen is hanging, bishop is hanging, d takes e4, f6. Bishop h4, take. So yeah, as always, Stockfish finds some crazy, crazy resources for the opponent. f3, bishop f5, and it says, with three pawns for a piece, black can still resist. Yeah, it is curious that Stockfish analyzing at sufficient depth even gives equality. Cool, okay, well... Yeah, I'm not too interested in Stockfish's evaluation of this random <laughs> game from the past, but uh, no worries. Bishop takes f3. This was playing in the game. Bishop takes f6. Gf6, queen h6. Knight e2, king h1, and now black is just busted, yeah, because this one is hanging. Takes, takes. Black tried knight f4. Takes, takes, king h1, king h8. The position is once again almost symmetrical, but now the fact that it is white's move proves decisive. Oh, white just wins here, rook g1. Rook g8 takes, takes, second rook comes to g1, and game over. Because we have this one after queen f8. Okay, well that's just the first game. A lot of these chapters, they start with like the uh, games for children, <laughs> I, I would call them. <laughs> like these kinds of games are great for when you're teaching like uh, kindergarten class and you wanna show them like, here's what happens when you play copycat chess. <laughs> okay, next game. But Tall, 1961, now we're talking. So as you can see, guys, that didn't take very long to go through that game. That was like, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. So you can kind of take as much or as little time as you need to go through a game. If a game is more interesting, then you can spend more time. If the game is kind of simpler or less interesting, you don't have to spend that much time going through it. Uh, okay, a question about when to stop. I mean, I don't have super strict feelings about it. The, the common advice that many coaches and authors give is when you see a diagram, you should pause and, and think about what you would play. I think that's totally helpful and you can do that, but I don't think it's like necessary. Honestly, I think some players like enjoy stopping and trying to guess the move. Um, sometimes I enjoy that as well. Like if I'm playing through a game and it's really interesting and you know, I'll, like I don't see the next move yet, I'll just like, just look at the position. I'll just spend one or two minutes and just try to understand like, hmm, 
what would I play here as white? You know, what would be my first, um, my first instinct? And then it's just interesting to just compare it with how the game goes. But you don't have to do that every move. You don't have to do that only when you see a diagram. Honestly, you can do that anytime. You know, anytime you see a position like, and you're not sure what you would do exactly, I think it could be a useful moment to to pause. So it ultimately just comes down to how much time you want to spend going through a game. If you don't mind spending more time, then I think it's totally valuable to like pause at various moments and just think for yourself like, hmm, what would I do here? Just think for a little bit, decide on a move. You can write it down if if you want. You know, just find some way to be very intentional about it like okay here I would castle or here I would play rook c1 or here I would play queen a4 uh, and then you can continue playing through the game and seeing how your move compares or how your ideas compare with uh, what happens um, and then you can check with the engine if you want to see if you know your move was like a total blunder or if it made some sense or maybe in some cases better than what happened in the game and I think little by little you can definitely just extra uh, extract some uh, some lessons from from this kind of practice um, okay, so let's sum up a little bit what we talked about uh, today in terms of how to study from a book. Uh, number one, try to read the words and play through the moves. You definitely don't have to rush through it. You can take your time and you can pause at various moments to try to guess the move or try to understand what you would play in the position and then compare that with what actually happened in the game, what the author says. And you can also just check with the engine and uh, get some uh, advice that way. Yeah, so hopefully that was <laughs> that was useful uh, for you guys. Long story short, you're just trying to learn a couple of ideas from the game, from each example, you know, take your time with the material, read through the words, play through the notes. If an evaluation or a comment doesn't make sense to you, that's probably a good uh, chance to pause there, think about the position, consult with the engine if you want some help that way, um, or if you're working through a, a book with a training partner, I think this is also a really great exercise so you guys can both keep each other in check and making sure that you're understanding the material. And yeah, lastly, just like looking for little moments or moves in the game that weren't covered, maybe you would have considered or you would have handled some situation differently than trying to understand whether you have a good good uh, feeling for the position or if your ideas are totally wrong and then understanding you know why your idea wasn't working was it a tactical reason or more uh, strategic reason you know just not not a good idea in in general and yeah little by little you know you don't become a great player overnight but you know you study one or two games a day today i think we went to through uh, i think like three or four games so you go through a couple of games every day and you know in a month you've already gone through like 100 games, right? 90 games. You know, after a couple of months, you know, you, you can go through like hundreds and hundreds of instructive games. Um, so yeah, hopefully this was, uh, this was helpful for all those uh, struggling with how to, how to go through written material, how to read from and study from chess books.